But instead of beating ourselves up, praise ourselves, give good feedback, positive sensation. Hi, everybody. It has been kind of a meh week this week. I am still sick. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It's um, I've had kind of a low grade fever on and off, green drainage, uh, sinus stuff. Scott really thinks it could be a form of long COVID. Uh, I'm not exactly sure just because it seems like it's coming and going and not really ever dissipating. I'll do good for a while and then it flares up. I'm not really sure. Um, I am a bit disappointed because I had to reschedule my MRI that I was going to do this week for my low back, my uh, pelvis low back area to, I think, a week and a half out. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of where things are right now. Things that I ate this week. Bacon and eggs like normal. I actually didn't put myself in a calorie deficit this week. What does that mean? That means I didn't lose any weight and I did it purposely. I figured if my body is having to fight off infection, the last thing I need to do is put more stress on it by creating a deficit and not eating much. So then my body's having to deal with that as well. So I just upped the amount of what I ate this week. I'll be fully honest with you. I did not do great about filming anything this week. I got some bacon and eggs and then I was feeling sick. And then honestly, I stopped caring. <laughs> when I have a fever, it does not matter. I'm just like gone to the world. But I can tell you some things that I still did to help me is bone broth. I did yogurt. I did the protein powders. I had been trying to mix them in with the yogurt, but I discovered actually I prefer to have them separate from my yogurt because then I just get more water in, not mixing them together. So that's actually worked out pretty dang well, is getting the protein powders in that way, which has helped me meet my protein goals. I can't say it's made me feel better because this week I've been sick, <laughs> but... It, I know it's going to help hopefully this upcoming week. I feel like I'm finally starting to come out of it uh, for starting our new Miso, which is just our new cycle of workouts for the next eight weeks, I think is what this one is for. I've been drinking water, water, or water, quite a bit of the Chopo Chicos, and then also some Element. But let's take a second to hear from the sponsor of the video. I'm gonna make some element for myself real quick. Even when I'm sick, I still will do these, even though I'm not working out or doing long walks with the girls. I'm still having a fever and things like that right now. It's got sodium, magnesium, potassium, things that really help when we're sick and not sick. And it doesn't have any crap fillers, nothing in it. This one is a raspberry salt, so it has a little stevia, but that's it. Right now, Element's offering an eight pack, sample pack free with any purchase. You just need to go to drinkelement.com forward slash carnivorous me. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash carnivorous me. No weight loss this week on purpose. We'll see how this next week comes. If I still feel sick, I'm gonna keep myself out of a deficit. I have been, as I've been sick, listening to tons of podcasts and doing tons of research. And I have discovered what is the best group, or I shouldn't say best, what is the most successful group of people for weight loss? I was thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. I realized it's professional bodybuilders. Not that that's what I want to achieve, but it is professional bodybuilders. They literally, not that I think it's healthy, by the way, they literally cycle through gaining weight and losing weight constantly for their shows and things. So I have been digging into like what they do, things they do, why they do what they do, and have come up with some really um, interesting techniques as well as I've learned a handful of different things that actually support why I think um, some of the things I do, specifically how you get out of being in such a low calorie deficit. Like how do you keep that from decreasing your metabolism to where you're like, eating a thousand calories and not losing weight. How do you do that? And I have been doing a deep dive into that. And I've come up with some just amazing 
practical techniques that can be used that actually work. Why? Because it's the things that they use to get to their like really, really low body fat for their um, competitions. And then when they gain to gain muscle and things like that. Anywho, so hopefully this week I'll feel better and do some videos on what I've learned to share with you guys because I'm going to start implementing some of these techniques. It's nothing crazy and it doesn't impact how I eat carnivore necessarily or eating carnivore, keto war. Uh, it's just the tools that they use. So stay tuned for that hopefully this week. Um, forgive me if I don't get as many videos out as I intend this week, if I'm still feeling meh. Tiny tips for this week. I have the most amazing one for anybody, and it can honestly go for any diet that anybody is doing. <sighs> Taking the methods of tiny habits, which is you do the tiny habit and you always celebrate at the end right? Most of you probably know this by now. And if you don't, it's actually one of the key important things for doing tiny habits is a celebration. It helps wire it into our brain. Why? Because our body thrives on positive feedback. Things like if you're stressed and you eat a cupcake, you get positive sensation, you get serotonin from eating that. So your body says, hey, next time I'm stressed, I'm going to eat a cupcake. And this is how the cycle of behavior around using food to soothe our emotion happens. But we can use that to in two different ways. But the first way is celebrate every single time you make your carnivore, ketovore, keto, whatever, I don't care, meal. Celebrate when you make it. So the second you are done making your food, celebrate. And it needs to be like this deep, I'm proud of myself, I made this or, you know, whatever. Celebrate when it's done and then celebrate during and after you eat it. And the big thing is if you forget the first two, that's okay. Celebrating the second you're done eating it. Okay. You literally set your fork down, however you want to do it and say, good job. Good job, Amanda. You ate your carnivore, your keto, whatever. You ate your meal that's helping you get to your goals. That is positive reinforcement that's going to help us because then a lot of people are like, well, how do I make myself want to eat this? This is how by giving positive reinforcements, by eating the meals that we want to get us to our goals. So normally we're not gonna get that like, ooh, fuzzy serotonin feeling from eating a steak. Most of us won't, if you're a binge eater or experienced emotional eating, but we can create that over time. Sorry, my throat is going kind of sore. Um, we can create that over time by giving this positive feedback. Good job, you ate that steak, good job. And it's not necessarily the words or however you want to praise yourself. It's about feeling proud inside. That is the main importance. Feeling proud inside that I did what I said I was going to do. And it, they call it shine in tiny habits. But to me, it's just it's feeling proud. I was my word. I have integrity. I did what I said I was going to do. Giving that positiveness inside and it helps wire that as a habit, but also makes us want to do it because we can praise ourselves for it versus relying on the comfort of food and the feedback food gives us. Why not tap into that mechanism and use this tiny habit of celebrating every time you finish eating your meal? Okay. Because we always focus on beating ourselves up if we eat something bad. But the book says, and I wholeheartedly agree, we change best by feeling good about ourselves, not bad. Well, if you eat bad and you, you beat yourself up for eating bad, we're well, making yourself feel bad. So why would you want to, like, what's going to give you motivation to step on and then go back to eating the way you want to eat? So let's flip that on its head. And instead of just always beating ourselves up, which I don't suggest doing, by the way, but instead of beating ourselves up, praise ourselves, give good feedback, positive sensation to when we eat well. So this is the tiny tip for this week. When you eat well, praise yourself, celebrate, whether you want to dance or throw your arms up in the the sky or say something out loud or honestly, it doesn't even have to be physical. Smile and just say, you know, I'm proud of myself. You pick. All right, y'all. I am starting to run out of steam 
my throat. I am, my voice is getting worse as I talk. My throat is getting very sore. I appreciate you guys so very much. I hope you really know that. And here's the thing too, is we don't always have to have success and progress with our weight loss every single week. That is something that has been drilled into my head that I'm a failure unless I lose weight. But here's the thing. This week I didn't lose any weight. Am I a failure? No. Did I purposely try to not lose weight and just hit hold steady state? Yes. But I decided that was what was best for me. Does that make us failures if we don't see progress with the number? No. What is just as important as losing the weight is being able to maintain it. And that'll kind of lead us into hopefully the next video I'm feeling better and I can do. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful week and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.